Okay, welcome. Uh, this is a, a marginal analysis question um, taken from Krugen Wells, Macroeconomics, Second Edition, Chapter Nine, Question Nine. Uh, it's like the CDC smallpox vaccination example. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, so I'll kind of go through it pretty quick. But um, hopefully, you might, you know, if you're clicking on this, then you probably have some questions. So uh, let's go through it. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention (CDC) Uh, recommended against vaccinating the whole population against the smallpox virus because the vaccination has undesirable and sometimes fatal side effects. Uh, suppose the accompanying table gives the data that are available about the effects of smallpox vaccination program. Uh, note that none of this is true. This is just okay to make the point about marginal cost and marginal benefit. Uh, so uh, when I wrote down the table, uh, and when you write down the pit table on paper, um, be sure to leave this little space in between the two because we're going to when you find the marginal benefit, marginal cost, you're finding it from increasing, you know, the percent of the population vaccinated of zero percent to ten percent. Um, so you are when you fill in those marginal benefits, you're going to be filling it in this like hypothetical in between space, you know, of going from here to here. Okay, so you got percent of population vaccinated, 0%, 10% of the population vaccinated, 20%, 30 so on. Uh, deaths due to smallpox. So uh, when 0% of the population has the vaccination, then 200 people die. Uh, when 10% of the population has the smallpox vaccine, 180 people die. Uh, when 20%, 160 die. Uh, when you have a relatively high portion of the population, you know, 60% uh, vaccinated, then only 80 people die. However, the trade-off, uh, once again, is that um, the vaccination has undesirable and sometimes fatal side effects. You know, so just because uh, you got vaccinated and part portion of the population is now a little bit protected from smallpox, um, there are some deaths due to the vaccination side effects. So when zero percent of the population is vaccinated, uh, obviously, you know, there are no deaths due to side effects because no one's vaccinated. When ten percent of the population is vaccinated, now there's uh, four people who die um, because of those side effects. 20% uh, of the population is vaccinated. Now 10 people have died. Uh, additional people die uh, due to the side effects. So you can see these are the deaths. These are the um, these are the costs, and these are the benefits. Um, so you get the benefit by saving lives due to vaccination. So fewer people die because of smallpox. But then you have this added cost of people dying because of the um, the uh, vaccine, you know, side effects. Okay, so part A, calculate the marginal benefit in terms of lives saved, uh, marginal costs in terms of lives lost of each 10% increment of smallpox vaccination. Calculate the net gain uh, for each 10% increment in the population vaccinated. Okay, so you just barely can't see everything. So um, I'll show you the chart here. So you got percent of the population vaccinated, uh, the same chart that we had seen before. Um, but I added these three additional columns. So first things first, uh, the marginal benefit of the vaccine. So going from 0% to 10%, you go from 200 lives lost to 180 lives lost. So the marginal benefit is the 20 lives that you've saved. The marginal benefit of going from 10%, in which uh, 100 people die, to 20% of the population being vaccinated to only when only 160 people die is another marginal benefit of 20 lives saved. Uh, and you fill it in down here. So you can see this 20 is the difference between this number of people dying and this number of people dying. So here is our marginal benefit. For each 10% uh, increase in the portion of the population, the percentage of the population that's vaccinated, you get 20 lives saved. So now turning to marginal cost of the vaccine, So marginal cost, uh, when you go from 0% of the population to 10% of the population being vaccinated, you go from zero people dying to four people dying. So the marginal cost of vaccination is four. Um, so it says marginal cost. So before I had a little negative sign there, and the fact that it's called marginal cost implies that it's a negative value. So I don't really need to have a negative there. I'm gonna remove all of them. So the marginal cost of going from 10% of the population vaccinated to, sorry, from 0% of the population to 10% of the population vaccinated is those four people who died. Um, going from 10% of the population up to 20% of the population being vaccinated, 
you go from four people dying to 10 people dying, so the marginal cost is the difference between those two. So 10 minus four is a marginal cost of six. Uh, and then you follow the same uh, cycle here. So for example, when you go from 50% of the population vaccinated to 60% of the population vaccinated, um, you had 50 people die with 50% of the population vaccinated. And with 60% of the population vaccinated, you had 74 people die. So the marginal cost there, the additional number of people who died due to the vaccinations is 24. And then lastly, we have this net benefit of increase in vaccinations. So the net benefit is the difference between the marginal benefit and the marginal cost. So going from zero to 10%, you had a marginal benefit of 20 lives saved, but four lives lost, so the net gain is 16 lives saved. Going from 10% to 20% vaccination rates, you have a net gain of 14 lives saved. Going from 20% to 30%, you have a net gain of 12 lives saved. Uh, and going from 30% to 40%, you have a net gain of 5 lives saved. And then going from 40% to 50, you have a net gain of 4 lives saved. Okay, so at 50% of the population vaccinated, you have a positive but small net gain. So you save 3 lives. Um, yeah. However, note that when you go from 60% of the population to, sorry, from 50% of the population to 60% of the population vaccinated, you now have a net gain of negative four. So four people have lost their lives due to the increase of vaccination rates. Um, so in terms of, let's see, calculate each net gain for the 10% of, okay. So that's what we've done here for part A. Part B here asks, um, using marginal analysis, determine the optimal percentage of the population that should be vaccinated. So going from 40% to 50% of the population vaccinated, you saved an additional three lives. So you're now at 50% of the population vaccinated, um, and you every step along the way, every increment along the way, you've been saving lives, uh, however fewer and fewer lives. So now you're sitting here at 50% vaccination rate, and you're thinking about, well, should I go up to 60%? You look at the data, and it tells you that four people are going to die because of it. So you stop. There's no reason to uh, vaccinate the additional 10%. Uh, the marginal benefit of 20 is less than the marginal cost of 24. So you stop at that 50% vaccination rate. So that's the optimal percentage of the population that should be vaccinated. Um, and then the, another key here is to think about, you know, this is just an example, so you want to abstract this to anything else. So you can think of... Uh, rather than percent of the population vaccinated, you know, all these numbers were made up. You could think of this as, uh, let's say, your business, and you're thinking about um, the number of ads to place, you know, like the number of billboards to place, the number of commercials to buy, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a marginal benefit in terms of the return to that advertising, you know, like the additional people visiting your website or the additional people going into your store, but there's also a marginal cost. You know, those, ad those additional advertisements cost money. Um, so what you do is you think about the marginal benefit. So what value do those benefits get you? Whether you know additional people to your website, additional purchases, additional people in your store, uh, and then for each increment of advertising, you might do some, you would compare that to the marginal cost, like how much uh, additional spent ad spending did you have to do, um, and then you could you continue to increase your spending until uh, the net gain turns negative or until the net gain you know just levels off. Um, to optimize your, in that example, ad spending. You can apply this to, you know, almost any number of situations um, such that uh, you such that you have this kind of relationship where, you know, marginal benefits uh, and marginal cost kind of are going in this trend. They're going to be intersecting each other at some point. So in this case, marginal cost was increasing, uh, but the marginal benefit was staying the same. Often you'll see the marginal benefit kind of slowly either be constant or, you know, increase for a while and then slowly decrease. And then you'll see marginal cost is going to just steadily increase. Um, yeah, great. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, thanks and have a good day. Bye.